Motor Week is made possible by Tire Rack. Now, if there ever was a car supposed to be for our times, it's this one, the Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Diesel. Its midsize has front wheel drive and is powered by a thrifty V6 diesel engine. But sometime during the Sierra Diesel's development, the energy crisis was somehow declared over, and the American car buyer gratefully forgot the energy crunch. So today, diesels like this Sierra account for less than 4% of all cars sold. It doesn't help that diesel fuel now usually costs more than high test, and that there have been a lot of well-publicized questions about diesel reliability. Doesn't matter, Oldsmobile still insists that the Sierra Diesel's day is here and now. They figure it's just a matter of time till everybody else sees the light. And if they ever do, here's what they'll find. Yet another member of General Motors' A-body clan of family-sized front-wheel drive sedans. With those clean lines and the waterfall grill so typical of Olds, the Sierra's diesel option will add $500 to the base price of $9,014 for the LS Coupe. Our Brome four-door came loaded. It cost $13,263. Being the most distinctive part of this car, the 90-degree 4.3-liter V6 diesel was first unveiled in late 1981. Previous GM diesels had fuel pump, injector, and oiling problems, so they took this V6 for over one and a half million miles of testing before production. Output is rated at 85 horsepower at a high 3,600 RPM, but with a maximum of 165 pounds of torque coming in early at only 1,600 RPM. That peak muscle at cruising speeds helps translate into expectedly high fuel economy ratings of 28 in the city and 43 on the highway. Our 100-mile urban loop produced a consistent 34 under a variety of loads. Our car came with the standard three-speed automatic. A four-speed overdrive auto is also available and should improve fuel economy even more on the open road. Other changes for 1984 include an electronically controlled emission system for California cars to cope with their tougher clean air laws. And everybody gets a revised suspension system that's supposed to improve ride quality without any significant loss in handling ability. But we've found GM A-body cars find handling family transportation all along. True to form, the Sierra ducks and rolls without excess despite its standard shocks and tires. Front drive understeer is present to be sure, but the lightly loaded back end tracks well, allowing a fine average speed through our slalom of 42.5 miles per hour. In sharper turns at higher speeds, directional stability is good, even though the rear end pitches high and on the outside of its springs. A surprisingly wide engine power band also contributes to the Sierra's respectable handling and produced equally pleasing acceleration figures for a diesel. 40 to 55 passing time is 6.5 seconds. That's slow for gasoline machines, but above average for diesels. In fact, all acceleration numbers were only a bit slower than what we consider average for petrol-powered models. Timed runs from zero to 60 amounted to 15.6 seconds. A 500-foot on-ramp jog took 10 seconds for 48 miles per hour and the standing quarter mile terminated in 19.5 seconds at 68. Overall, a very fine performance for a 3,090 pound diesel. But wouldn't you know it, there's still a fly in the ointment, the Sierra's brakes. They still suffer the ills of premature rear lockup, inducing severe axle hop. Other braking factors, though, were better. Average stopping distances from 55 after six tries were a short 125 feet. Fade was minimal and pedal pressure solid. While the tendency of the Sierra's rear to swing around was less than some competitors, we still think GM has a lot of work to do on its front wheel drive brake proportioning. Another unfortunate fact of life with a front drive car, less parking lot maneuverability. The Sierra's 39 foot turning diameter is a foot wider than the larger rear drive Cutlass Supreme. On the other hand, it's hard to beat the Sierra's interior room, 
considering its overall trim exterior size. Front occupants will find generous head and shoulder room. Only those drivers with the longest of legs will complain of cramped space for their left foot. Seats are comfortable. They are flat with no side support worth mentioning, but our lower back suffered no pain over even the longest trips. Our car had Oldsmobile's Rally Gauge option, which we think is one of the best laid out clusters on any car. Even if attack is relatively useless on an automatic, we appreciate its presence. We also like the high, wide, and very flat trunk. Our four bags disappeared quickly. The underfloor spare tire and lower than average height of the rear sill were also collectively applauded. So as with most other GMA cars we've seen, most of our comments are on the positive side. As before, we think brake proportioning still needs help. But as for this particular Sierra, we're happy to say its V6 diesel performed flawlessly. But there were two faults with the car. Production line mistakes did leave us stranded with a near total electrical failure. And the automatic load leveling system never did quite find its correct height. But we're assuming those problems are one time only. And they didn't really squash our overall good feeling about the old Sierra diesel. And when, not if, oil becomes short again, owners may not be able to resist saying, tastefully of course, I told you so. Thank <laughs> you.